the fact that I was able to defy all odds and get myself a score that I didn't think was possible, let alone for me but for anyone I knew, proved to me that we are all capable. We all have the potential, we all have the ability to far exceed our own wildest expectations, to make our wildest dreams a reality. Your exam date is going to come in the next three to four to five months. And what happens on that date can and will completely change the trajectory of the entire rest of your life. This is your contract with the future. You've been given a chance to bargain with it. You've cruised through life up until now, but you've been given a catapult in the form of this exam. The harder you pull it during these months, the farther you are going to go. The time is going to pass anyway. 24 multiplied by how many ever days you have left until your exam, that's how many hours you have to seal your fate. It's your obligation, it's your responsibility to make the most of every single one of them. Most of us have had this thought that if only I knew how I should be working, I would kill it. We've all wondered how those who succeed do it. We all have the same 24 hours at the end of the day. It's how you choose to spend yours that determines your fate. We've all wondered how do those who succeed spend their 24 hours. With this video, I am going to answer that question for you. This routine is how I scored a 7.30 on the GMAT. Let's begin. Like I say, you make your first decision of the day before the day even begins. The first decision of the day is made on the previous night when you decide what time to go to sleep at. So my routine begins when my alarm rings. Not in the morning, but on the previous night. You see, I had an alarm set for 9.45 p.m. every night. And as soon as the alarm would ring, no matter what I was watching on my phone or my laptop, no matter how funny or intriguing or fascinating it was, the second I heard the alarm ring, I had to put it down, I had to stop. I would then go brush my teeth, maybe wash my face and be in bed by 10. The next morning, my alarm would ring at 7. That's 9 hours of in bed time, yes. And I 100% stand by it. We usually need 8 hours of sleep and this is supposed to be a particularly stressful and taxing time for you where you're constantly straining yourself cognitively. That plus my morning gym uh, combined with the occasional evening exercise, I could not work on optimally. I could not work optimally on anything less than 9 hours of in bed time. That's about 8 to 8 and a half hours of sleep. I would then freshen up within half an hour, meditate for 10 to 20 minutes, make my morning coffee and be on my table ready to start my work for the day at 8. The next two hours would be my first bout of deep work for the day. Phone, of course, switched off. All distractions, of course, put away and two hours of uninterrupted, intense, focused work. Just as I would start to get tired, I would hear my hourly chime tell me it was 10. I would finish whatever question I was in the middle of, close my work for the session and get up and get ready for the gym. At the gym, I would have the time of my life. With my favorite songs blasting through the speakers, I had amazing workouts and used this hour or so to just pump myself up and freshen my mind back up after a good, solid bout of work in the morning. By 11.30, I would leave the gym, freshen up by 12 and sit down for my second bout of work until 2. Again, uninterrupted, focused, intense work. 2 to 2.30 would be my lunchtime with some YouTube. Maybe some podcast, maybe something else, but usually something educational, something informative. 
the next half an hour would fall just around the middle of my day and I would use this time to recap my day so far. I would analyze how the day had been since morning, what I did, how well I did it, how I could have done better. For the following two hours, I did my third and final bout of studying for the day. Okay, so here's the thing. I knew that this final bout wasn't optimal. I would get done in these two hours as much as I did in less than one in the morning. And that's what we know through the science as well. The human brain is not designed to be able to work deeply for more than four or five hours a day. I didn't even know the science back then. It was just through listening to my brain and body that I could tell that I was pushing myself beyond my limit. So I knew that this wasn't sustainable, but I was at the point where I was willing to work even beyond the point of maximal returns for, the, for those few months. I would sometimes cut this shorter by about half an hour. If I felt like I'd gotten done enough through the day or if I just felt too drained by the end of it all. The next two hours were my recoup time. I would try to keep myself away from YouTube and Netflix and video games and I succeeded about 60% of the times. So I would play some music, sing some songs, play some chess online, go out and throw some hoops, maybe go swimming, whatever I was feeling like out of these. Of course, sometimes I would just sit and binge some show or play some Call of Duty for these two hours. 7 to 8 was my dinner time with my family. This would of course be a good heavy dinner. Dinner is where most of my calories came from because I didn't have breakfast and lunch would be quite light so that I could continue to walk even after eating. And from 8.15 to 9.45, I would give myself complete off time and just sit and watch whatever I wanted to. It would usually be something lighthearted, something to have a good laugh with, something like the flagrant podcast with Andrew Schultz. 9.45, of course my alarm would ring. I would put my phone down that instant. I would brush my teeth, maybe wash my face and be in bed at 10. This was my daily routine. This was the routine that helped me go from being a boy who'd never worked a day in his life, who didn't think that he could work, that he could achieve anything, to a man who, by scoring a 730, broke all his expectations, and with them, his limiting beliefs, his feeble self-worth, his measly self-confidence. Use it wisely, boys, and make your dreams a reality one day at a time. I will see you in the next one.